Welcome to video number two of a series of short lectures entitled The End of the Calories In, Calories Out Theory. My name is Francisco Arencivia Albite. I am an associate professor of human physiology at the Universidad del Sagrado Corazón in San Juan, Puerto Rico. The aim of this lecture is to explain the body composition response to prolonged weight stability. The concepts and results discussed in this lecture are original and were published in August 2022 in the Journal of Theoretical Biology, and the article is of open access. Any change in body weight equals the sum of the changes in fat-free mass and fat mass. A surprising fact about this deceivably simple expression is that it can be rearranged into meaningful forms as I explained at the end of this lecture. The first of these expressions computes the rate of change of fat-free mass as a fraction of the rate of change of body weight. Note that the expression within the square brackets computes the fraction of the rate of weight change that corresponds to the fat-free mass rate of change. The second expression computes the rate of change of fat mass as a fraction of the rate of change of body weight. Note again that the expression within the square brackets computes the fraction of the rate of weight change that corresponds to the fat mass rate of change. For the sake of discussion, I will call these two formulas the body composition equations. Prolonged body weight stability occurs when the body weight time derivative is either zero like in the ideal case, or as it oscillates very close to zero as in the non-ideal case. Thus, by setting the body weight time derivative to zero or to about zero in the body composition equations, it becomes immediately clear that as body weights remain stable, fat-free mass and fat mass are also stable. Therefore, during prolonged weight stability, body composition must be stable. The physiological interpretation of this mathematical finding will be given at the end of the lecture, before the derivation of the body composition equations. As an example of the previous conclusion, I provide personal body composition data showing that, in effect, as body weights remain stable, fat-free mass and fat mass are also stable. In both graphs, the blue curve plots my daily body weight at the left axis over a period of 30 days. The red dots represent my daily fat mass fluctuations, while the black dots represent my daily fat free mass fluctuations, both quantities plotted at the right axis. These measurements were done naked on an empty bladder and after a night's sleep using a digital scale equipped with bioelectrical impedance capabilities. I also provide a list of three references that illustrate that, in general, in steady weight populations, body composition is also stable. Exercise science has shown that under special circumstances, it may be possible to build lean mass and to lose fat at the same time, while body weights remain stable, a process informally known as body recomposition. This may lead to the impression that the body composition equations are inaccurate as, at first glance, they do not appear to capture such possibility. This, however, is not correct, since these equations do anticipate the process of body recomposition, as illustrated by the next simulation. In this computational experiment, the body composition equations model a hypothetical subject that combines a slight overfeeding with a high dietary protein and a resistant training program. The details of the simulation can be found in the appendix of my 2022 publication. The top graph describes the evolution of fat-free mass and fat mass under the training program that begins on day 14 and continues uninterrupted for a period of 64 days. The bottom graph plots the progress of body weight over the same time window. Note that as the training program begins on day 14, fat-free mass increases as fat mass decreases, with these mass changes being of nearly identical magnitude as revealed 
va de bodyweight time course. Although the bottom plot suggests that the bodyweight time derivative is zero, this is not so since bodyweight is in fact increasing as revealed by the next graph, where the rate of weight change is very small, leading to a final masking of about 30 grams. Observe that as the bodyweight time derivatives become zero, fat free mass and fat mass become stable as predicted by the body composition equations. Thus, body recomposition under a stable body weight is a transient process that over time also ends in a stable body composition as observed in the general population. According to the body composition equations, if body weight is steady over a prolonged period, its time derivative is on average zero, and hence the fat free mass and fat mass derivatives are also zero on average. This simply means that a steady weight implies a steady body composition, which begs the question why this is the case. I now provide a qualitative interpretation of the body composition equations at a steady weight. If a person is under prolonged weight stability, then the person is not overeating and the person is not undereating. If the person is not overeating, fat mass cannot be increasing. Also, if the person is not undereating, fat mass is not decreasing. Hence, fat mass must be stable, which means that body composition must be stable. Therefore, in general, if body weight is stable, body composition must be stable. Before going into the derivation of the body composition equations, I would like to emphasize the key points of lecture 1 and this lecture. In lecture 1, we learned that by defining the VO2 deviation, it is possible to divide all cases of energy balance into three mutually exclusive categories. Type 1 energy balance, where the average VO2 deviation is negative. Type 2 energy balance, where the average VO2 deviation is zero. And type 3 energy balance, where the average VO2 deviation is positive. In the present lecture, we have learned about the body composition equations, which indicate that during prolonged weight stability, body composition is also stable. Consequently, if the calories seen are on average equal to the calories out, then fat mass and fat free mass are both stable. As we will see in the final lecture, the analytical application of these important facts will render the calories in, calories out theory as an impossible paradigm. I now present the derivation of the rate of fat free mass change. Recall that any change in body weight equals the sum of the changes in fat free mass and fat mass. Multiplying and dividing the left hand side by the fat free mass change produces the following expression. Next, we multiply the numerator and denominator of the fraction within the square brackets by the reciprocal of the fat mass change. This operation leads to the following expression. Multiplying the expression by the reciprocal of the fraction within the square brackets yields, dividing both sides of the equation by the change in time gives, finally, as delta t approaches zero, we obtain the desired result. At last is the derivation of the rate of fat mass change. Once again, any change in body weight equals the sum of the changes in fat free mass and fat mass. Multiplying and dividing the left hand side by the fat mass change produces the following expression. This operation leads to the following result, which is the same as the next equation. Multiplying by the reciprocal of the expression within the square brackets yields, dividing both sides of the equation by the change in time gives, finally, as delta t approaches zero, we obtain the desired result. This concludes the presentation. Thanks for watching, and I see you in the next lecture.